Hi, in this video we'll be looking at some factors which affect the price elasticity of demand. So what sorts of things make a certain good or service very elastic and what factors make certain goods and services very inelastic. And as you can see there are quite a few of these listed on here. There are loads and loads of these factors. I'll just go through some of the key ones uh, fairly quickly. So, and this should cover all bases, but we can think of plenty of other ones if you want to be more original, say, in your exam answers. But it's, it's always good to list off these key factors. So perhaps the most important factor affecting price elasticity of demand of a good or service will be the number of substitutes. So if a good has lots and lots of substitutes, then it's going to be very elastic. So let's think about that. If if, say, we have a good that has lots of other similar goods, we, we can think of a supermarket as an example. If in our local area we have, say, 10 different supermarkets very nearby and one of them increases their price, well, we can just switch to a different supermarket and just shop somewhere else. We have lots of substitutes nearby that we can choose instead. And so this increase in price of one of those supermarkets is going to cause a very large decrease in quantity demanded because there's lots of substitutes there. So this makes it more price elastic, that certain good or service, because any change in price is going to cause a much larger decrease in quantity demanded. The flip side of that is imagine you only have one supermarket in your area and they increase their price. Well, there's nowhere else to go. So the quantity demanded might even stay the same or it's just going to fall very slightly, so this good would be very inelastic. So the number of substitutes is a very key factor affecting our price elasticity. Another factor is the breadth of definition of a good or service, and this is just basically how we're defining our good or service. So uh, an example that's often used is one for food. So if we just think of a category as food, and this is just our good or service, this is obviously going to be very inelastic because we, if the price of just food, if every piece of food increases in price, we're not going to reduce our demand for food because we need it to survive. So this is going to be very price inelastic. However, if we define our good much more specifically and we look at a particular type of food, let's say pasta, if the price of pasta increases, well, we can just switch to something else. Maybe we'll buy bread instead. And so the quantity demanded of pasta will decrease. And we can go even finer into that and, let's say, spaghetti. Well, if, if the price of spaghetti increases, well, maybe we'll just switch to penne pasta or carbonara, or not carbonara, or, say, tagliatelle pasta. And so this will be even more elastic than pasta as a whole sort of definition because we can switch to other pastas within that thing and there are more close substitutes to that type of pasta. So more specific definition of a good is going to make it more elastic. Another factor which is going to affect our price elasticity is whether this good is essential or non-essential. So if a good is not essential to our survival, it's going to be more elastic because if something very frivolous that we don't need increases in price, well, we can just reduce our demand for it. However, if something we really need increases in price, like again, we can use this food example, well, it's essential for our survival, so we're not going to reduce our demand for it, so it's going to be more inelastic. Sort of linked to this idea is again, this factor with addiction. And so if something is less addictive, it's going to be more elastic. And if something is very addictive, it's going to be inelastic. We can think of things like cigarettes for this one. And so we may, we may think of cigarettes as not being something that's essential to our survival. But once you've started consuming them and you get, say, addicted to them, they become more essential to you. So it's harder to switch away from them once you've started. And if, if you, you smoke a lot of cigarettes a day and the price increases you're going to be quite inelastic to that change in price. You're going to keep buying cigarettes because you're addicted. Another factor to consider is the percentage of income spent on that good. So if a good takes up a large proportion of your income, you're going to be more elastic to changes in its price. 
Let's look at an example of your rent and let's consider that you're spending 50% of your income on rent. Well, consider that your rent, I mean, it's slightly unlikely, but your rent doubles in price. Well, that means that it's going to be now taking up 100% of your income, and that's obviously not sustainable. You're not going to have any money left to pay for food or just anything else you'd want to spend on. So if your rent doubles in price, you're going to have to change, and you're going to have to live somewhere else that's cheaper. So you're extremely elastic to that change. However, if we think of, say, like a chocolate bar, chocolate bar, if that costs, say, £1 in a shop, and the price of that doubles to £2, well, it's not going to be a massive issue. If, you, if you're really wanting a chocolate bar on that day, you're probably still going to be willing to pay £2 for it instead of the £1 that it was before. And that's because this is a much smaller proportion of your income. You can afford to pay that double the price because it's not really costing you that much anyway. Whereas rent is something that takes up a lot of your income, like 50%. If It doesn't even need to double if it just increases by some amount, say 10%. Your rent increasing by 10% is still going to be a big thing, and you may have to consider moving houses. So that's another factor. Another one will be the number of uses. So say if a good has not, not very many uses and it increases in price, you're more likely to stop buying it. However, if it's a good that has lots and lots of uses, then you may want to see, keep paying the higher price because it, that good is very useful to you. We might think of something like milk, that if the price of milk increases, then maybe you'll stop buying it for your cereal, but you might be into your baking, so you still need to buy milk to put into your baking or using your coffee or whatever. You're going to still continue to buy milk because there are lots of different uses for it. A very key factor is time. So as we move over time, people are going to be very elastic to goods increasing in price because they can change their behavior. And this is linked to this final point, which is sort of the ease of switching away from a good. So if it's easy to switch from a good to another good, it's going to be more elastic. And so an example that we used before was that if there are lots of supermarkets, if it's, if it's very easy to switch to a different supermarket, like you just go to a different one down the road, then it's going to be more elastic. And if one supermarket increases its prices, you can just go to a different one. However, if it's very difficult to switch and there isn't another supermarket nearby, then it's going to be more inelastic because there are no other options. And so this is sort of linked to the time idea. Let's think of a different example, say transport. And let's say that you currently get the train to work every day well if the prices of trains increase one day you probably have to in the short term continue riding the train because you don't have any other way to get to work so you're completely inelastic from one day to the next however let's consider a year from now if the prices of trains are still really high you might have bought a car to sort of switch away from the high train prices, or maybe you've bought a bike, or maybe you've come up with some other way of getting to work. So this longer time period makes everyone more elastic because they can find different ways to do things. And again, this can tie in with a lot of other things like addiction. Over time, you might find a way to overcome your addiction. Uh, certain goods might not be as essential because you found alternatives for them, and so on. So those are some factors affecting price elasticity of demand. I hope this video was somewhat useful. If it was, please do leave a like. Make sure to check out the playlist for more videos like this and subscribe to add some econ to your subscription feed.